Remember the United Nations estimates that the entire world has to get to net zero emissions by 2050 yeah. to stay under two degrees warming above pre-industrial levels. And there's a lot of pressure coming on India to announce its own net zero year. Yeah. You've been working on this as well as on peaking year and things like that. So can you tell us why it's critical to set a peaking year in order to determine a net zero year? Yes, yes. Thank you, Anubha. Uh, the debate on net zero is extremely important. Uh, a lot of people are talking about it. IEA has also released a scenario, but it's only one scenario. It is very useful, but uh, we need to have a much more comprehensive understanding right. of the transition by looking at alternative scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, for a rapidly growing economy, the question of peaking is implicit. Uh, in the question of net zero. Uh, so, so uh, there are two principles we need to think about. One is credibility of policy signal and second is a certainty. The net zero year gives a sense of certainty of the future. So, right. it is great. Right. Uh, but the, the credibility is still not there un unless you announce a peaking year because it is so far down the line that right. stakeholders do not really have a you know urgency, sense of urgency. Right. So, a peaking year has to be there. It is imperative for us to announce a peaking year in combination with a net zero year to give a sense of credibility as well as certainty of the transition. So, it is extremely important for us to think about both of these two. And that is important because India and countries like India are still growing, whereas other countries have already peaked. Already peaked and declining, most of them, yes. Right. Weber, unpack this for us. Suppose we pick 2050 as net zero year. What would that mean for a peaking year? What would that mean for sectoral transitions? What would be the trade-offs? So, for 2050 net zero, I, I do not think we have uh, much of a choice of a peaking year, it has to be 2030, it cannot be later than that, it cannot be before it. Okay. Uh, now, in terms of the rapid pace of trans transition, it, it will be unimaginable. Uh, the share of renewable and non-hydro renewable energy would have to be on beyond 80 percent. Uh, the share of electricity in industrial energy use has to be almost 70 percent by 2050, uh, up from like less than 20 percent right now. Right. So, very rapid transitions. In terms of the political economy challenges, the trade-offs it will present, the electricity charges for households will have to increase because electricity pricing reforms will need to happen. Uh, the coal dependent states, the fiscal resources, uh, they will be challenged to you know uh, get get alternative sources and they have to think about a very new economic, very different economic paradigm uh, for them. So, these are very important political trade-offs that we need to understand better for the transition. Uh, now, let me ask you Arnaba, uh, what do you think, how do you think it would be different for India? as compared to other nations of the world to reach peaking and then net zero. I think just picking up from what you said Weber, this pace of transition, if we leapfrog, we should internalize in India and outside India how significant this would be. Between its peaking year and its net zero year, the EU has had 71 years, um, the UK 77 years, Japan 46 years. So, and even China. If it peaked in 2030 and with 2060 net zero is 30 year transition, you are telling us we would have a 20 year transition. And at what level of development? Even if we peaked in 2030, our per capita emissions at that time would be about little over 2 tons per capita. Whereas when the EU peaked or China peaked or Japan peaked, there were over 9 tons per capita. The US was peaked at more than 19 tons per capita. So, it is not about yes or no, should we aim for this or not, it is about the pace of transition has never been achieved anywhere else in the world yes. and if India has to lead the world in that regard, we will need a lot more investment, lot more technology and a complete overall in how we reimagine our economy.